Hi, welcome to another edition of Hey Coach. My name is John Messina, and I want to welcome somebody. It took me 10 years to get him on this show. Somebody that I highly respect. I've probably learned more as an athletic administrator uh, how to do things right. My good friend, Jay Stewart, who's now the athletic director at Treasure Coast. Welcome, Jay. Well, hi there, John. How are you doing? That's good. Ten years it took me to get you Well, here. that's okay. That's I, okay. You know, I wanted to let you have a chance to get the show underway well, before it, it, I came in here and critiqued it for you. <laughs> <laughs> I know, on the circus. But I know we had such a great time when I was working with you. I mean, uh, I, I learned so much from you, and um, we had some great times. And I think, you know, we made the county proud. We certainly did. And I, I, I will say this. Um, you know, you established uh, a reputation for excellence everywhere you ever were, and you did such a tremendous job for us as an athletic director. And you recall my role was as a county AD, and I never, ever had to worry about anything at your school. Because if you had a question that you weren't sure about the answer, you were willing to pick up the phone and call. And I called a lot. And if it wasn't me, it was Sheila. One That's of us right. knew the answer. That's right. Do you remember the first time we met? I do not. Okay. I was coaching in Port St. Lucie a Saturday afternoon. We were undefeated, number one in the state, and the bus was late. And you were running the soccer all-star game at the field over there. And uh, I was getting pretty uptight, and you came over, introduced yourself, and told, told my kids, hey, there's plenty of food for you. And you kind of relaxed them a little bit. The bus came, and we got down there, and we had a nice win. But that's the first time I met you. Wow. I, that goes way back. I forgot we even hosted the All-Star right, game there. Right, right. But, but that's the kind of stuff that you always do for teams, especially I, I, kids that are doing what you guys did with that team. A um, little bit about your background, Jay. How did you get involved in athletics? Oh, this is a terrible story. Um. I wasn't allowed to play sports when I was in school, so I'm vicariously living my athletic career through my role as an athletic director. The only sport I ever played was soccer in PE class. And one day I kicked the ball and I hit George Dillon in the nose <laughs> and I broke it. And he came after me and he put me on the ground and he, uh, made me promise that I would never play soccer again in the rest of my life or he was going to kill me right then and there. And he had me like this, and I believed him. <laughs> so that was my athletic playing career and my sports career. And um, I always grew up wanting to be a part of an athletic program, and I didn't even realize it. When I put my resume together, I said that I either wanted to be an activities director or an athletic director at a high school someday. And that was... 20 years before I ever got the job. Now, your first so, job was at South Fork? My first um, teaching job was at Murray Middle School. Um, what happened is I had actually gotten a job in New Orleans as a fourth grade teacher, but I really uh, wanted to teach fourth grade. That's all I ever wanted to do. I was convinced, <clears throat> for whatever reason, fourth grade is what I wanted to teach when I started. So, so I got a call from Marion Carpenter down at Port Salerno Elementary School, and she wanted me to be a kindergarten teacher. And I told her, no, I don't want to be kindergarten cop. So finally, I ended up getting a call from Ed Sheridan down at Murray Middle School, and he offered me a seventh grade teaching position. And then <clears throat> I don't know why I remember the date, but I believe it was October 15, 1983. Dr. Schaefer at South Fork <laughs> walked up to me and said, hey, what, why don't you come over to South Fork? Um, and I said, when? He said, next week. So I ended up going to South Fork about two weeks later. And I was there until 1995. And then I went to um, Fort Pierce Central in 1995 and became a dean of students. Um, and in 1998, Mike Leeds uh, left the Open Centennial. And uh, I applied for the athletic director's job and, and, and was able to get it. And then um, a couple years later, he left and went to the county, and I became the county AD. And I retired then in 2015, and then I got one of those phone calls from a principal saying, hey, um, you think you can come help me out? So that's how I ended up back at Treasure Coast. 
Five years after I retired. Five years after you retired. Well, thereabouts. Mm -hmm. I guess I went there in the last year, September uh, September 16th. I started over there last year. And look what you're so. in the middle of right now. Uh, hey, this has been this has been invigorating. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's a it's a challenge. That's it, all it is. It's always been a challenge. See, and solve solve problems as they crop yeah. up. And the one thing that I've told my coaches is that figure out what you can deal with and figure out what is going to change because of COVID and let's work with what we know we have and don't worry about the unknowns because the unknowns will become knowns eventually. Well, your famous quote that always, I always remember, and I remember my secretary Candy, we always used to say it to each other, it's never a no problem, problem until, it's, until a problem. it's a problem. Yep. And, and you got to look at that. And I always tried to emphasize that with my coach. Was there anybody that was like a role model for you? that you copy as a coach? Well, there's so many people um, that I looked up to, um, and I know this could become a controversial statement, but Joe Paterno was one of the, the, the best coaches that I, you know, he was the only coach I ever knew. I grew up like 20 minutes from Penn State University. And the way he would, you know, interact with his, his players and, and so forth, you know, it just was... Just he was a role model for me as a coach. Even though I was coaching soccer, and although I never coached anything, I always thought if I ever wanted to be a coach, I want to be I want to be I want to be a, a player's coach. And then um, then there was another gentleman, Frank Watts, who came and volunteered with me. He kind of broke me in as a soccer coach. Uh, they Dennis Jacob wrote an article about me taking over the South Fork soccer program, and they had the George Dillon story in that article, and. Uh, so we were out there practicing, and our first game was going to be against Jupiter. And the station wagon pulls up, and um, the kids go, oh, you think they're scouting us? Well, I didn't want to tell them. I, I highly doubted it because this team at South Fork had only won four games in four years that the school was open, and we were pretty bad. Um, but this gentleman got out of the car. He come, walks up and says, hey, I'm Frank Watts. I played soccer for 40-plus or minus years, and... I diddled around a little bit with coaching with my kids and, you know, could I be of assistance? And he was my mentor and he really, really molded me um, as a coach as well. And then there's one other person that I owe a lot of gratitude to. Um, her 100th birthday, I think, would have been today, but her birthday was November 19th. It was my kindergarten teacher. Wow. And um, she taught for 44 years and retired. And... As I uh, was growing up at 12 years old, growing up in the Appalachians, pretty poor family, I became a paper boy, and she was on my route. Uh, I started a paper route. Now, now and, there's people out there that don't have a clue what a paper route is. Well, now. yeah, well, a newspaper route, like yeah. carrying the Tyrone Daily Herald in the Altoona mm -hmm. Mirror and the Grit, and uh, any paper I could make a couple of cents, so I made 40 bucks, uh, 40 bucks a month. Um, but um, she made sure that I had enough money to go to college. I got wow. some scholarships, got some financial aid, but she gave me enough work on her farm that she single-handedly kept me out of debt as a student by working on her farm. Wow. And I'm indebted to her, and today would have been her 100th birthday, I think. Wow, that's a great so, story. Yep. Is, is there one game that stands out when you were coaching? My very first one. Um, there's a lot of games, but... My first story is I, uh, was my first coaching lesson. Uh, as I said, I never played a game and never coached a game. We went to Jupiter to play that game I talked to you about. Four minutes and 29 seconds. I told the kids before the game started, I don't care what you do. Let's just score the first goal, and we'll go from there. So um, four minutes and 29 seconds into the game, Neil Rabin, our center midfielder, chips the ball down to John Cunningham, John Cunningham runs in, scores, come back. Everybody's happy. We're up and running. Dennis Jacob was on the sideline for that game. It was my very first game, and he was on the sideline. The only problem was Jupiter scored the next 10, and the game was <laughs> over. <laughs> but don't you remember that? My first game, I had been an assistant at Miami Pace, and we had won the state championship two of the previous three years. So I'm now, now I'm the head coach. I got everybody coming back. We're loaded. We open up against John I. Leonard, 
playing at Miami Dade North, and me as the head coach forgot to book the field. So now we got 500 people, John I. Leonard, newspaper people, no place to play. So we're driving all through Miami. We finally found a field in North Miami that let us play. Wow. With the goalposts in left field, <laughs> or like 150. And we got clobbered. And, and you know, you always, I, I remember Coach Maneri, Demi Maneri, the, the legendary coach at Dade North, just called me the next day. He says, you know something? You'll learn. And, and I, I always remember something like that and, and stuff. But uh, what do you think with athletics in high school has been the biggest changes since you and I started? Uh, I think the volume of liability and the resulting paperwork that comes along with uh, all the litigious times that we're in. Do you remember um, the pink sheets? <laughs> The what sheet? The pink sheet. Yeah. Where you can make yeah. a kid eligible yeah. in like 30 seconds. And Well, and you send it up to Dorothy Bronson and yes. call her up and say, hey, we need we need this kid today for a game. No, okay, problem. no problem. I got it. Yeah. And we had to type yeah. it in. Yeah, we had to type it in. Yeah, we had typewriters. Carbon copy. You know, we had uh, mimeograph machines, too. Mm -hmm. But um, I think probably that's one of the things. There's just a volume of paperwork that goes with everything. Uh, you know, there's so many... Uh, Things now, and I think some of them are, are positive too. Um, I mean, most of them are for positive reasons, but you know, I think we made a lot of progress in terms of making it safer for kids to play. You know, we have the Thor guards in place to do the concussion management. So while things seem to be a little bit more complicated with paperwork, in essence, what we've done is we've made it a safer environment so kids can survive being a high school athlete. So. And not that, so I don't want to make it sound like it was a bad thing, but you asked what really changed. What really changed is the volume of paperwork, yeah. plus the fact that we're always wanting to make sure that we cover ourselves uh, to be, you know, not to have liability amongst our ranks to deal with. And I, I remember when I first started with baseball, being the AD and the baseball coach at Miami Pace, there was no starting date. You were playing as many games as you could. This is the early yep. 80s. Yep. And everything, and well, there's a lot more sports now. Well, that was the other yeah. thing. I was going to say, the offerings that we've given students, yeah. I believe, too, that um, I believe that the Title IX has been a good thing for yes. female athletes. It's really helped to give them the opportunities and help the young ladies to grow up. Well, and, softball was slow pitch when I started. Right. Slow pitch with... Ten players. And you know what? Basketball started off when we were in school, Correct. playing half court right. for right. girls' basketball. Right. <laughs> hey, we're telling our age. We used to know each other back in the dark ages when we both had dark hair, yeah. remember? <laughs> yes, and, and you know, it, it has changed for the better. It is yeah. a little more complicated. Um, you know, the transfer rules are just kind of crazy now because there's no really no transfer rules, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, that's something that you just have to deal with in your area and everything. And um, I, I know the FHSA has done, has gone through a lot of big changes. Um, you know, we can sit and talk all day about the new computer system. I know they're not doing it this year because of the COVID, but, you know, years ago, when I first started, you had your district. One team got out and your district was not three and four teams. Yeah. It was one team, one team got out, you played your district, you played your regional, then you played your sectional, you played your state, it was over in two weeks. Yep. You know, now it's like prolonged. But right now we're going to take a little bit of a break and we'll be right back with more from Jay Stewart on A Coach. People think I'm trash, but they're wrong. Today I'm just an aluminum can, but one day, I could be a stadium. Back here at, with Hey Coach, with my good friend Jay Stewart. This is 10 years in the making, so you know every <laughs> minute is worth it. But uh, now we're going to talk about your new school treasure coach. Okay. You know how much you love Central. I know one of the reasons is because of your principal, Todd Smith, that you went over there, without a doubt. And I think you had the relationship with Todd that I had with John Lynch you know, who I would have followed anywhere, you know. But uh, tell me a little bit about Treasure Coast Sports and keep football to the end because we're going to spend a little bit of time on that. Well, um, let's talk a little bit about why, why I went there. Um, you know, um, first off, God's been really good to me. I had a stroke uh, about two years after I retired. 
Um, and I've completely recovered from that, uh, with the exception of one little minor thing that nobody ever notices but me, <laughs> with my side of my face and sometimes speech. But um, so God has blessed me. And the summer before um, I was, I came back to being an athletic director. I don't know why. I was just driving up I-99 in Pennsylvania, and I just thought, like you know, it was so much fun back then. It was. You know, because it was about a month and a half after my stroke. And I thought, you know, it was so much fun um, being an athletic director. And something came to me and said, don't worry about it. You'll be one again someday. Really? <laughs> and that, that it literally mm. just hit me like that. And I never, it just passed me. And I didn't even think about it again until after I became an athletic director at Treasure Coast High School. But, you know, Dan... Was Dan Como, uh, when I was county AD, we brought him on board. I worked with Helen Roberts to get Dan into Treasure Coast, and he opened his school and got it started and got it off and running. Um, so he retired, and uh, he, there was just some things there that, that um, you know, was just waiting for somebody to, to walk into. You know, the, the, the programs were in place. I cannot tell you um, the level of respect that I have for my coaching staff. They are just top notch. I have, I have just so blessed with the coaching staff that I have there. So that's the first thing I can tell parents that their kids are surrounded by very, very competent professional staff in their golden hours. That little time between school and home that the void is, needs to be filled with something. And in many cases, kids' time are filled with things that are not good for kids. But those kids are surrounded by outstanding staff in those golden hours. And you see it in every aspect of our program. And so I arrived at Treasure Coast a little bit, you know, thinking, oh, well, they're going to think, you know, I'm just there because Todd is there. Here, here comes one but, of Todd's guys. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so like I, but I got there and everybody just said, oh, we're so glad you're here. We're so happy you're here. And it just, it's just been so easy. It's been, I, I don't want to say easy because it's hard work, but it, people, they've responded so well. I'm, it's rewarding. It is. And the biggest thing that I have done there is that those facilities are, 12 years old, I think, now this year, because we ground broke that school on February 1st of 2005, if I remember correctly. 15 years. 15 yep. years. And so that school is, you know, close to 15 years old, and there's just some things that it's time to start. So we started trying to up, upgrade the facilities a little bit and do some things, and that's going to be an ongoing project. My plan was to be there just, you know, last year and maybe a little bit this year, but who knows how long it's going to be now. So, because I have some, some ideas in mind of some things that we want to do with the facilities, most of which I haven't said to anybody because <laughs> it's in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> but we have, I have some big ideas that we can put into place down there that will really make that a top-notch facility. Now, tomorrow night, you get the big regional second-round football game or is it third round? Uh, it's, well, it's, the, and this year, it's I guess the last week was a playing game. They okay. did, they did um, all the uh, seating this year came out of a, a hat. So we had to play. You think it really came out of a hat? Well, who knows what it came out of? <laughs> all I know is that Vero Beats got to buy and get to play at home, <laughs> and, um, and we had to go on the road. And you had to go on the road. And we had to play in the play-in week. Yeah. So now we're in the final 16. So I guess this would be the regional right. quarterfinals. Right. Um, so, um, yes, we're in the regional quarterfinals. And you're playing who? Olympia Titans. Okay. Titans playing. versus Titans. <laughs> at South County tomorrow. South County at 7 o'clock. And yeah. what is the amount of spectators you're letting in? 20%. Okay. And they of, to, of, the, of the size of the stadium. And they have to buy their tickets? Yeah, we're doing all the tickets online at gofan.co. And it's okay. not .com. It's .co. Okay. So they go buy their tickets ahead of time and they have to show... Yeah. Do it on their phone or whatever right. coming in on the game. And they talk that you're talking about changes. That is the one blessing COVID has given us. We do not have to go to the stadium with change anymore. We don't have to count tickets after the game. 
Everything is electronic. They show you your phone, they push the little button, ticket splits, and they're in. So you're not having any money. We do not have to do a bit of money. You're not we, jealous I No am. ticket reports. I got all these ticket reports sitting there and I don't have to do them anymore. And I think you know how many <laughs> games, how many hours after oh, the game, heck yeah. I'm sitting there yep. with school security counting the money, yeah. it's one and two in the morning, and trying to balance it off. Well, I haven't had to balance one single ticket report all year. They've been, they've been spot on every game, and it's been done two minutes after the game's over. That's terrific. <laughs> and you don't have to worry about carrying the money back to no, school no, or, or things like that. that. Nope. Um, Coach Jones, I have the utmost respect for because he runs, first of all, the type of program he runs. Very respectful. I remember, and I told him this when he was on the show, about six, seven years ago, he had one of the worst teams I have ever seen. I think that they went, they didn't win a game that year. Not for his trying, they just did not, he had a nice group of athletes, but they just couldn't win. He kept the same offense, the same philosophy. Next year, I think he won six, seven games, and I think he's been close to 10 games every year. This year, you had your first undefeated season. He runs, what do you call his offense that he runs? I, I think they call it the wing tee. I'm not, remember, I'm not, a, I'm not an athletic guy now. <laughs> <laughs> he, runs, he runs the wing tee, yep. which probably maybe two or three other schools in yeah, the state Everybody run. hates it. They don't want to play us. They don't want to play you. Yep. They know what you're going to do. You're telling them what they're going to do, you're going to do. And you know what? You do it. Yep. And, and, you know, I, I watched a few of your games on TV this year. And the announcers are saying, well, they're going to run to the left. And they ran to the left, and they still pick up 10 yards. But um, I, you can't, your coaches can't look ahead. As athletic directors, you have to look ahead. That's part of your thing. Of course, you're not going to tell the coaches you're looking ahead. If you do get by this week and Vero Beach gets by Central, then you have a classic matchup, and that would be at your place, right? Uh, well, no, I believe there will still be another another branch. Oh, there's between another there. branch. We have wow. to play, I think it would be the winner of um, Miami Palmetto and somebody. I, wow. I don't know. Now, that's going to be... Or Orlando or Dr. Phillips, somebody. I mean, yeah. it's a it's a crazy matchup. Yeah. Vero Beach would be in Vero Beach. See, that's the other thing. Really out of a hat? Because they get to host that game before the Final Four. <laughs> that, that, that's, so. a, that's a big difference. I mean, and again, I, you know, I'm looking at Fort Pierce Westwood, and, and you know, my son Joe has a, a group of students called Panther Nation, and they do a great job filming the games. And they had to go over and play Tampa Middleton last week, even though Westwood had a much better record than Middleton. They won the game pretty easily. Now, the following week, they got to turn around and go right back even further to play Palmetto out there, which is outside of Sarasota. So, you know, I, I know it was a tough year, but you remember the old days, if you played on the road this game, then the next game you were home or two games on the road. But, um, you know, the, try, the, the one thing that was very difficult last week, there was 19 forfeitures. And people just didn't want to travel because of the COVID. Uh, I think this week already they got six. Now, now, what's going to happen if you get to a big, big game, like state semifinals or state finals? What do you think would happen there? Well, I don't know, but, you know, that falls back into that category. We're going to control the things that we can control. Uh, our coaches have done everything they can to avoid putting our kids in situations. Uh, again, my coach, you're talking about Coach Jones. Uh, he came to me today and he says, you know, I'm, I just don't think I want to put these kids on a bus Friday night. He says, you know, we've been fortunate. Let's, let's just have the parents and the kids go. Can we do that? So we met and we got it figured out. We're not going to put the kids on buses for the next two weeks. Because you're in county. Yeah, because we're in county. So we're going to work on getting them there with the parents and, and the way we need to do it in such a way. But those are the kinds of things that you know, you're speaking of Coach Jones, and I, I, I don't know if you're going to mention this, but I'm still coaching soccer at LPA. I, um, I know you are. I, but, that um, was my next question. So, I was setting you up for that. Well, okay. So anyway, so the other day we're sitting, we're playing Treasure Coast yeah. in soccer. Mike, uh, Matt Walby is coach, our coach at Treasure Coast, and 
I'm on the bench. We're playing Lincoln Park. They beat us. Uh, Treasure, my school beat my you other tell school me who's us, two today. to one. Uh, I'm getting my Treasure Coast beat Lincoln okay. Park two to one. And you're it was still a good coaching game. Or four kick, to one. Four to you're one. still coaching the kickers then. Four to two, something like that. And yes. you're coaching the kickers at Treasure Coast. Yes, yeah. Okay, so then you know, it's a little confusing. Yeah, right? that's okay. okay. But I've worn lots of hats over the years. I know. And I don't know how I do it, but again, that's a God thing. I just <laughs> do whatever yeah. happens. Yeah. So, um, so the kids were... We were playing the game. The kids turned around, man, they're good. They're good. And I told him, I said, that's because I have the best football coaching staff in the nation. <laughs> and I believe that. No. You know, I really believe. I well, just do. Well, and uh, they just have done a great job. No, they, the last few years, and, and, and I love to see you, you know, now that Centennial's out, which would have been my first choice. But now that I see what Coach Jones has done. And like I said, I'm, I'm his biggest supporter outside. I'm his biggest fan. I brag about, you know, this guy's doing his philosophy. He took a team that was 0-10, and he stayed with that philosophy all the way through, and he doesn't change. Um, real quickly, as we get down to the end, uh, with the other sports, is there any special safety precautions coming up with basketball and soccer? Well, we are, we're doing a couple of things. Um, my coaches and I, first thing I've done is I've talked to coaches. What are you comfortable with? So um, we, for our home games in basketball, we are not putting any spectators behind our, our teams, okay. uh, which means that uh, the JV kids and the freshman team will sit behind the varsity team, and then we're going to put the cheerleaders in between on the side behind the teams. And then we're going to put all the spectators on the other side. So that's one precaution we're going to do. Everybody has to wear masks. Everybody's temperatures. Now, they, checked. are they wearing a mask while they're on the court? Uh, no, there's the, the the masks are worn when they're sitting on the on the bench. Okay. But I'm saying all the spectators okay. are going to wear masks. Um, I'm not particularly crazy about having big crowds um, to be in. So uh, we we will have 120 fans in our gym. But, you know, really it'll be closer to 200 With people a little bit more yes. once you get all the kids in. Um, but at the end of the day, sorry, that's the other thing about the mask. They never want to stay where they're supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, you know, it's just it's an enclosed environment. Right. You know, it's a concerning, it's a concerning thing. Right. Uh, we want to give the kids the opportunity, but, you know, masking temperature checks will, and smaller crowds will be the the rule of thumb. That, that's our norm. Well, I want to thank you for coming on the show. I hope it's not going to be another 10 years. Uh, I hope I don't we're know. still around <laughs> in 10 years. But, you know, wish you guys the best of luck on tomorrow night playing a football game and, and hopefully have a nice holiday and you're safe and you keep your health yeah. good, doing good. And let's keep well, in touch. Well, one other thing we need to mention. Hey, Sheila, we know you're watching this show. Yeah, our, our good, our good <laughs> Nice friend. talking to you. Sheila, Sheila Reese, our longtime yeah. county athletic right. secretary. So I'd like to thank everybody, and we'll see you next month on another edition of A Coach.